Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Chuck's podcast. Again, I am taking over and I'm so excited because I have a very good friend of mine, Lori Wilhite, who is going to be one of our speakers at our women's conference. And I'm so excited. Hey, Lori. Hey, Pam. It's always so good to see you. Always so good to see you. So good to see you too. And I can't wait to finally hug one day. <laughs> oh, one day. Someday, Pam. Someday we'll get there. Someday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, how are you doing? Good. Doing really good. Just, you know, I feel like uh, the, the life is kind of starting to spin again. Busyness is like mm -hmm. at full throttle. So all of it's all is good. Yes, that's good. Now, do you guys have smoky air over there? We'd, it's better than it was. You know, we're a valley kind of like you guys are, like surrounded by mountains. So anything that blows over from California okay. gets trapped in the Vegas Valley. So um, it's better than it was, but definitely you cannot see the strip from very far right oh, now. My for, goodness. For, yeah. Yes. For those of you that don't, don't know, Lori's from Vegas. And um, our wind shifted, so we have really clear skies right now. <laughs> oh, hey! Well, you know, celebrate while you can, right? Yes, you're getting it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank okay. you. So you're married to Jed, who is a pastor, and so you're a pastor's wife. I am. And once on staff at Crossroads. We were. We moved to Corona from Texas in august of 2001 wow so a long time ago now a very long time ago when our daughter emma was just six months old and now she's a sophomore in college so that tells you like how long ago it's been and uh and we really we were there two years before god moved us to vegas but we sure did love our time in corona so every time we drive through corona on the way to the beach or San Diego, where my daughter goes to school, we always like do a shout out point to the church and to our old neighborhood. And so uh, we really did enjoy our time at the church and in Corona. It was great. Yes. Good. Good. So how long have you and Jed been married? We've been married almost 24 years. Wow. Uh, December. I'm the, I'm the dummy that married a pastor at Christmas. So I married, we got married, uh, December 28th, like idiots. And so, um, every anniversary we're like, so tired from 9 million Christmas services that we like basically high five and we'll say, see you in the new year. But, um, yeah, we've been married 24 years now and it's been great. It's been great. It does help that he's pretty awesome. That does help when your husband's a great guy. I agree. <laughs> it's it's been a Emma. good ride. That's good. And now you mentioned you have Emma. We do. do. Yeah, Emma is our, you know, she's our singer, songwriter. She is a, a worship major slash communications, media okay. communications major in college. She's never met a song she didn't like. She's 19, super sweet. Um, just a little tiny bundle of um, creative energy. And then we have a almost, we're this close to my son's 17th birthday. I was actually very pregnant with Ethan at, in the last little bit of our time at Crossroads. And so he is going to be 17. He is my video gamer, like all video games all the time, and is 6'4", giant you know, gentle giant little teddy bear. Like, don't let him, don't let him know I said that. But he is like the sweetest, the most gentle kid. And so, yes, yeah, so I'm like, I'm like right at the, I feel like the twilight of my parenting time. Like I'm, I've about got them to adulthood and um, not that I'll ever like get out of parenting, I know, but, but I've about got to that, gotten to that place where they're kind of, making decisions on their own and, and, um, you know, following God's path for them. And so it's a pretty fun time of parenting. You have a little um, more freedom. Yeah. Well, Jen and I are always like, bye. And we like, <laughs> go to, I don't know the last time our kids have gone to dinner with us. We just leave them. We're like, pick something for yourselves. And we, we head off on dates and, and it is a, it is a great time. And, um, it's just really fun. Young adults, 
I feared so much having teenagers wow. uh, when my kids were little, you know, I just, I loved my littles and I feared having teenagers. Cause you just hear like all the stories, right? Everybody will tell you like, Oh, teenagers are terrible. I thought teenagers were awesome, super fun, um, really snarky <laughs> and funny and witty. And um, I thought their friends were a blast. And so it definitely made for some interesting times for sure. And not always rainbows and sunshine, but I really enjoyed the teen years. So I don't fear the teen years, y'all. It's going to be okay. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And so as we move into the young adult years, I'm excited to see you know, what happens next, maybe someday, not too soon, I'll get to be a grandma like you, Pam, and then I'm, I'm going to be the rockinest grandma, Pam. Yes, yeah. I agree. I love the teenage years, but I have to say, the adult years, being a grandma, the best. Yes, I know you, you're a great grandma, too, so. It is so fun, and it's so, um, much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Spoil those darlings and send them back, it's fine. <laughs> Yes, it's so fun. I love it. My um, son was over at my parents' house the other day, and and they had ordered him pizza. And so he got his limit of pizza, like I make him limit. And my parents were like, oh, buddy, you can just have the whole pizza. And I'm like, oh, whole pizza. Oh, my gosh. I'm a grandparent. I look forward to it one day. But for now, he's got a limit. And it's almost payback. <laughs> it really is. It is the best. Okay, I know one of your passions is for women in ministry because you have a wonderful ministry. Tell us about that. Yeah, I started leading and loving it. I'm going to say about 12 or 13 years ago. Honestly, I should know that off the top of my head, but um, I started it a while ago, just kind of, you know, I had really gone through a period of just insecurity and depression and discouragement, just feeling like my husband was awesome. I knew without a shadow of a doubt, God had called him into ministry, that God had him doing exactly what he was supposed to do. My fear was that God might have messed up with me, and I wasn't sure that I was <laughs> the right choice for a lot of the things we were doing, and I just struggled and struggled so much, and once I kind of got kind of solid on my feet again. And God kind of healed me from a lot of that brokenness and insecurity and helped me just realize that maybe, just maybe, he knew what he was doing. Maybe. <laughs> um, that once I kind of settled that in my own heart and life, I, I just thought, you know, there have to be some other women in ministry that feel the way I felt that are really struggling, that it's really hard. And maybe it's not depression and insecurity. Maybe it's criticism and difficulties with, um, you know, hard, hard, you know, maybe board members or church members that, that give them a hard time, or maybe it's staff difficulties or whatever it was. It, I, but I just thought there have to be some people out there that are like me. I cannot be, please, Lord Jesus, tell me I am not the only one, right? And so, but I had just been to so many conferences. I'd, I've been to some great conferences. In fact, this is, I think, probably, it may have been this conference was the first time I met you because around the time we were taking over, you were not far behind us on your move to Crossroads. Right. And so um, it was one of the first kind of pastors conferences we had been to. And and at this conference, they were going around and all these women were standing up and introducing themselves and, and they were like a rock star women. They would stand up and be like, I run the whole world and I homeschool my 90 children and I, um, you know, write 50 books a year and I teach the Bible study for my staff wives and cook them a healthy breakfast every Saturday. It was like that kind of thing. And I... I'm just thinking, well, I feel pretty good if I took a shower and my shoes match when I go to church, because that's kind of the stage of life I was in. And I just thought like, oh my goodness, I, it felt like everybody had it together and I didn't. And I know that's not true, but you know how the enemy can like get in your head and do that. Yeah. And um, so I thought, you know, I'm just going to get online and see if I can find some people who need some encouragement like me. And so I started leading and loving it as this kind of 
poorly written blog 13 years ago. And, um, and now here we are 13 years later with this beautiful community of women who do not have it all together and can own the fact that we don't and it's okay. And, um, encourage each other in our struggles and cheer each other on when things are going well and not worry about comparing one church to another, one ministry to another, just championing one another and helping pick each other up when we're down. And um, I know that's what I needed for a season. And so we've been kind of on a mission the last over a decade to try to be that in the lives of leaders so that they can have healthy ministries and healthy churches and healthy marriages. And so it's been awesome. I've been so grateful. We just have, and you know, Pam, you're part of that crew. And, and we actually have a group that meets once a month that we get to sit down like this with one another. And it's like a lifeline. It is a lifeline. It yeah. is a lifeline. And I need it. I wish I had had this ministry back when I had started because uh, times have changed in the last 20, 30 years from when compared to when I started. And so I'm thinking, I'm grateful for this. And I tell all our staff and staff women, please just join. It's awesome. And if you're in ministry, honestly, you need to go check out Leading and Loving It. It will encourage you daily. I promise you that. It's so good. We're so excited you are one of our speakers at this year's conference. And hey, you've got a killer lineup of speakers, too, because I'm friends with your other speakers. Yes. And I have heard them in person get to speak, because not only are they awesome off the stage, but they are, like, insane on the stage. So I'm thrilled for all of your gals at the church, because, wow. And I have to say, I have them because of Leading and Loving It, because I got to hear them. And so I nabbed them to get them to come to us, to pour into us. Yeah, you're a smart lady, Pam. It's awesome. It's so good. Um, this year is God's redeeming love and redeeming grace. How have you experienced that? Oh, man. Well, you know, I, like I said, listen. Before we met Jesus, didn't we all know very clearly that we needed God's redeeming love? Like, once you realize how far you are from God, man, that becomes very clear. But I don't know about you, but I need it every day since. I've needed it every day since. Thank the Lord. His redeeming love is not a one and done situation. It wasn't whenever Amen. you came to Christ. It's like a <laughs> daily refilling, a daily refreshing, a daily renewal. And... I know I need it all the time, all the time. And so even, you know, I look back at different seasons of my life when I have just felt um, overwhelmed or just like I'm not up to the task or like wondering if am I enough, enough of a mom, enough of a wife, enough of a teacher, enough of a, you know, pastor's wife, enough. They're like, am I enough? And I think in my seasons where I've struggled with that the most, is when God has been so good to bring two things into my life. One is just a clarity on being loved exactly how I am, yes. how he made me. Yes. And two, just a knowledge of the sovereignty of God, which, which I really feel like has been my life lesson that apparently I have to learn about <laughs> every three months. It's like God has to like hit me over the head and go, remember, we've done this. We've, we've learned this before. And, but I, I remember standing in the airport in Miami with a friend and I was getting ready to fly back to Vegas. We've been at a conference and I was just having this moment. It was kind of a Moses moment. Remember when Moses, God's in the burning bush and he's telling Moses like, you're like my guy, I'm going to use you and you're going to save the people and all that. And Moses is like, uh, I don't know. Not, I don't know if I'm enough of a leader. I don't know if I can speak good enough. I don't know. Like, and I was having one of those kind of Moses moments with her. Like, I just don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, I love my kiddos, but they're like normal kids. They don't perfect kids. And so they have drama in their lives and they got stuff going on and challenges that they have. And I don't know if I'm enough. I don't know if I can be enough. I don't know that I can be, you know, enough of an emotional support and an educational support or whatever. And I love my husband like crazy. He's the greatest, but 
I'm haunted by times that I feel like, am I enough? Enough of a support like he needs, enough of a cheerleader, enough of whatever. And I look at my church family and in Vegas of all places, like how God in, made us end up in Vegas is kind of beyond me, these two Texas kids. And I've often wondered, like, do I know enough? Do I pray enough? Do, am I, do I, can I counsel them enough? And I just was having that moment. And she grabbed me by the shoulders and she said, Lori, I just have to ask you, do you believe God's sovereign? And I was like, um, hello, church answer. Yeah, I do believe he's sovereign. <laughs> and she goes, then, then I got to ask you, do you not think he knows what he's doing when he chose you to be Emma and Ethan's mom? Do you not think he knew what he was doing when he chose you to be Judd's wife? Do you not think he knew the kind of pastor's wife your church needed when he chose you? Because if you really think he's sovereign, then you got to believe that he knew exactly who he needed in those roles and he chose you. Oh. And that was like a moment, like, honestly, it was like a kick to my chest in like the best way, but it made me stop and pause and think, okay, do I really believe he's sovereign? Not an easy church answer. Like, do I truly, truly believe he's sovereign? Yeah. Do I believe that all my faults, all my mistakes, all my mess ups, that he loves me and that he chose me and that he knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And once I settled that answer in my heart, um, it made all the difference in the world. And again, I come back to it a lot. I've had to come back to that lesson again and again and again when different challenges rise up. But I think he's so good in his patience and his constant reminding God. Yeah. Um, for people like me that apparently need the same lesson over and over. And so, you know, I'm just, I'm super thankful. Um, I was just doing some studying in Ephesians and looking at Ephesians 1 about the, how we're chosen and we're adopted. And I just was reminded again, like, man, God is so good because I'm not that good. <laughs> I'm not that great. <laughs> if I was choosing people, I don't know that I would choose me. And so like, man, thank you, God, for that kind of love and that kind of redemption and that kind of restoration in my life. You know, I think we all, uh, man, we're all just should be moved to a lot of gratitude, you know? Amen. And I'm thankful that I'm not God because I, I could get pretty judgmental sometimes and think, oh my gosh, that's so God's so good. And yes, lessons learned over and over again. And yeah. then I always ask, God, I thought I had this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. At least for a few, at least for a few weeks. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, we're having a four-week study after our conference, which yes. is the purpose of this conference is to go into a community life group type setting because my heart is for our ladies to connect. Yes. And so we're using your newest book, Rise Up. Tell us about that. Well, I wrote this book, um, Ezra. This book is really about the life of Ezra and lessons we can get from Ezra. Ezra, not a popular guy in the Bible to study, not somebody that we're all like, let's learn about Ezra. Um, and so, but as I started to kind of dive into this, I learned a lot about Ezra. Ezra was this guy uh, who was in exile, who was away from his homeland, away from, had been pulled away from everything he had known. Um, when, and everything is looking pretty good in Ezra's life. It says, the Bible says five or six times the gracious hand of the Lord was on Ezra. What a beautiful yes. statement. The gracious hand of the Lord was on Ezra and things are going really, really well until the first two words of Ezra chapter nine, when it says, but then, and haven't we all had, but then moments in our lives when things seem to be going pretty well, but then but then the coronavirus shows up, but then you get laid off, but then your kids start to really struggle, but then distance learning has to happen, but then whatever, right? We all have these but then moments. And then the question is, what do you do with your but then moment? And then in Ezra 10, 4, and this is really the crux verse of the whole study. It says, uh, rise up, take courage, 
and go do it. There was this guy named Shechaniah and Ezra is like laid out on the ground. He's torn his clothes. He's pulled out his hair. He's so distraught in his butt then moment. Shechaniah walks up to him and says, Ezra, rise up, take courage, and let's go do what God has called you to do. And I think especially in this season right now, I can't think of a better time for us to like be challenged by that verse in our lives to say like, okay, we've had some bad stuff happen. We've had some bad, maybe financial challenges in our life. Maybe we have a lot of fear and anxiety. Maybe we've had health challenges. We're just the general challenges of life. We've had a lot of, but then moments. Yeah. Okay. Now what? That now exactly it now we gotta now. rise up we gotta take courage we gotta do what god has called us to do and so i'm excited that you guys are going to be diving in to the study and the videos and the book and and this is not the kind of study that you're gonna like this is not a fill in the blank study ladies it's not this is a um you're gonna have to dig deep and you're gonna have to like get out the spade and shovel and get ready to dig into the stuff going on in your heart. Mm -hmm. But my hope and prayer for everybody that goes through the study is that God can really use this as a powerful empowerment kind of season in their lives to get them back up out of those kind of moments and back on track with what he has for them. Yes. Amen. Your books are so different than other study books that we've done. And I love it because it, you do dig deep and you get creative with how you do it. And so it really is, it's life-changing for me because I like the creative aspect of that. So I'm super excited. I started it, but not all the way. I did, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to go through it with our ladies. So I'm super, super excited for the study. I think it's going to be great, great for all of us. Good. Ladies, our conference is October 3rd, and I hope you'll all join us. It's at 7 p.m., and I promise you it will be life-changing. Lori's message is incredible. We're going to hear from Carrie Garcia. We're going to hear from Cindy Thomas. They are on fire. It's amazing, and I'm not kidding you. You need to sign up. If you need some encouragement, if you need some, I don't even know, just something to rise up something to encourage you to actually rise up this is the conference you need to go to you can go to crossroadschurch.com and i think you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page that's what i had to do the other day so <laughs> you can sign up and i think it's also on our app so ladies i really encourage you please go sign up today you'll get more book. you know i Let's just acknowledge that a lot of us are spending a lot of time online right now. So there's a little bit of like computer fatigue. Yeah. In our lives. But ladies, the only way to kind of battle some of that fatigue, the only way to battle the fact that we are pouring out so much is you gotta, you've got to take opportunities to get filled back up. You yeah. have to. And this is what I love about Crossroads this is what I love about Pam is that they're not gonna let the fact that you cannot gather stop you from having the opportunity to get filled back up. So don't let some computer fatigue stop you from taking advantage of this time and these teachers and these lessons and what God would have for you right now to fill yourself back up because listen, we got to run ahead of us <laughs> that we're going to have to do. And so you're going to be pouring out, but you cannot pour out what you have not filled up on. So get filled up on the goodness of God in this conference. Pam, thank you for yeah. taking the time and energy to create a space like this for your ladies, but do not miss out on it, gals. This is a great opportunity. Amen. I promise you, you will get filled up. The messages are going to be uh, uh, so challenging and so exciting. I, yes. Thank you, Lori. That was awesome. I will talk to you later. I mean, probably soon. Yeah, I, think I think maybe. maybe. <laughs> so, Crossroads, I love you guys. And I can't wait to hear how the conference goes. I'll be tuning in myself as well. But Pam, thank you so much for letting me join you today. Please give Chuck a hug. Tell him hi from the Will Pike. Give a hug for us. I will. I will. Love you. And see you soon.